Right, part three of our Find It Out All About Wonderful Japanese Footballers series. Um, back with Sam Robson at uh, FR Soccer Sam on Twitter. Uh, Sam, we're on about Yosuke Aideguchi today. Um, fair to say he's the, the third wheel of this kind of Japanese trio of signings. Any ideas why that is? Well, he's kind of not played that well for the last season. He's a weird, weird signing. Everyone thought Maida was a definite for Celtic and everyone can see why Hatate would fit in. Idiguchi's a little bit different. I mean, he's had a difficult time of it, really. He was fantastic when he first broke through, starting in 2014. He broke into a Gamba Osaka side, which had uh, stalwarts of the Japanese national team in their midfield. Like Yasuki, Yasuki Kono had 92 caps. Uh, Yasuito Endo had 152 and he broke through there, became like J-League Young Player of the Season 2016 and uh, was getting into the Japan national team as well. He scored an absolute wonder goal to send mm. Japan to the 2018 World Cup. And at that point, it looked like, well, they had a superstar on their hands. He's going to go play, start in at, at the World Cup in Russia, and it will all be fantastic. He'll have a great career. And then Leeds signed him, and it all went wrong. And Blame, blame Leeds, go on. It's, yeah, it's, that's easy to do. <laughs> but yeah, so they signed him on loan. Uh, well, they, they signed him, sorry. They sent him out on loan to Cultura Leonesa in Spain, the second division. They were a struggling team in that division, fighting relegation. They weren't quite keen to see a Japanese player come in and settle and give him that time because they were fighting for their lives there. And yeah, he just didn't fit in there at all. It was uh, really difficult for him. So he went out on another loan to Grutha Firth in uh, the Bundesliga 2 in Germany and started off really well there. He was uh, starting games, he's scoring goals. He looked a bit more like the player he was then got a knee injury after a, a handful of games. So that I, it kind of ended his time there and he came back to Gamba, kind of tail between his legs. And yeah, he took him a little bit of time to get going at Gamba. It was fantastic in 2020. And then this season, Gamba fell off a cliff with the way they were playing and Idiguchi kind of went down with them. So yeah, on form, it seems a weird signing, but there is a quality player in there that Ange must see something in and thinks that he can harness it. Yeah, I mean, he, he was signed at Leeds, as you say. Thomas Christensen signed him, um, and then he was sent on loan, I think, the, the same day as he was signed yeah. uh, to Leeds Feeder Club. Didn't work out, as you say. Bielsa um, came in. He didn't fit into Bielsa's plans. I think he played in one friendly. But it sounded like Bielsa said some quite nice things about him, about his you know professionalism and the way he carried himself. Um, so, so it seems like he's got something there. What kind of player is he? Well, he will probably play in that deeper of the midfield three, but he's a good ball carrier. He gets on the ball. He'll take it box to box, and he's a good uh, passer of the ball. I mean, his vision is very good. And he, so he's an all-energy, all-action midfielder. So when he's on it, he's a terrific player. It's just that occasionally, that whenever his team around him aren't playing very well, he kind of goes down with the ship rather than uh, bringing them up. And that's been his problem. He kind of... Yeah, just gets a little bit upset with thing, the way things are going. But when he is on it, when he is absolutely firing, he is a tremendous midfielder. What, what do you think Ange has seen in him for, for the way Celtic play? Well, he usually plays very well against Ange's teams. That's probably yeah. the main thing. He was, yeah, he dominates the ball and he's so he's good at getting the ball forward quickly. He's, he doesn't like to dally in possession. He likes to move the ball forward quickly. And that's how Ange wants to do. He wants to break the lines there. Uh, uh, almost immediately. So that's exactly what Idiguchi will do. He's yeah, he's always going to be involved in the attacks as well. He's not just a sitting midfielder. He might start there, but he'll end up on the edge of the area finishing attacks off. So yeah, that kind of energy in midfield, I think, is perfect if harnessed for an Ange Postecoglou team. And he also that that goal you mentioned, the one he scored for Japan, was against Ange's Australia in, yeah. in a twenty eighteen. So Ange will know all about him. He seems, I was watching some clips of Aide Gucci and he, I was expecting to see a real you know, defensive player who didn't really contribute much in an attacking sense. But he does seem to have a knack of arriving at the right time and, and scoring goals. Um, he, he also seems like he can find that pass sometimes, that key yeah. pass when defences are camped in. Yeah, exactly. I think we spoke about, I think, when we were talking about Hatate, that 
time that Celtic would probably need a quick through ball to Kyogo to make use of that run straight away. And that is kind of what Idaguchi does. He can get the ball head up straight away and he'll look for that pass. And that, I think, is exactly what Ange will want from him. And if that pass is not on, he can carry the ball 50, 60 yards up the field himself. And yeah, so he works in both ways there. So it's an ideal sort of midfielder. It's just, yeah, I, I don't know what it is about him. He kind of fits and starts really. And uh, maybe just a little arm around the shoulder from Ange Postacoglu and a little bit of belief um, might help him. But yeah, just the ability is there and the talent and kind of, the attributes that Ange would want are definitely there. Consistency, is that an issue? Yeah, absolutely. When he's on it, he can go on a stretch of being fantastic and unplayable. And when he gets in the dumps, I mean, like most of this season, I think he spent six months just giving the ball away constantly and just not really believing in his abilities. Le- lead spell, j- just to, to touch on that as well, and, and the Greuter first thing, um, picking up, I think it was a posterior cruciate ligament injury I've got here that he picked up in Germany um, obviously that, that kept him out for, for a long time, is, is he over those injury troubles? Uh, yeah, he's uh, not had any injury concerns since uh, uh, coming back to Gamba the only, I think there was a Covid uh, outbreak at Gamba which kind of slowed him down and he maybe struggled to get back from that for a little while but yeah, in terms of injuries there's no real concern so far uh, with his knee in the last couple, uh, two and a half years, I think since he moved back to Gambosaka, you've maybe already answered this, but how has that gone in general, would you say? Uh, first season, 2020, magnificent. He was one of the best players in the league, probably one of the best midfielders in the league. Gamba were playing well. They finished second in the division. And yeah, he just looked like he was back to his old self. But this year they had various injuries. They had that COVID outbreak, which kind of made them play a lot of games in quick succession. And they were in a relegation battle for most of it. And uh, yeah, he just, it's just a kind of a temperament thing, maybe a mental thing that he, when the team around him is struggling, he kind of just went and struggled with them. So it's just, I don't know how it's going to be brought out of him that if like, if he's playing the Celtic and Celtic in a bad way, is he going to be able to galvanize that team? That's my main issue with him. But in a confident team, as they were last season, finishing second, he was incredible. So you wouldn't really describe him as a leader then? Uh, no, no, sadly not. Right, okay. Um, and just another question I had, you know, we talk about Hatati already, and I think it's fair to say that he's a player who can be very good, maybe take him a little bit of time, but he could yeah. be an absolute star. Maida, you think, will, will come in and, and probably do it quite quickly. Yeah. without putting words in your mouth. Um, Aida Gucci, how, how would you kind of sum up how he's going to fit in? I would say the Gucci is low risk, potentially high reward. I th- right. don't necessarily know. I don't think he's a starter in that Celtic team. I think he will come in. But as I've said before, there is a player there. If Ange can really drill into him, get him believing in himself, then you've got a very good player there. And potentially he might become like a really good bargain player. But uh, yeah, I think it's just, as I say, low risk, high reward is exa- is just what I would say to sum up uh, Idiguchi. Uh, the only other thing, as you kind of mentioned earlier, in, in terms of you're not going to get a sitting player. His goals, I mean, you just watch any sort of compilation of Idiguchi, he scores absolute cracking goals. And mm. you have him sit, patrolling that like 10 yards outside the area and he's got that, yeah, that real eye for it. And uh, yeah, with confidence, like I keep saying, he's, he's going to score goals for you. He's not going to just be that holding player that doesn't really get involved in anything. He will be all action. He will be the player that will look to dictate the tempo. So, yeah, just come on, Ange, get, get something out of him. Definitely. Um, Sam, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure chatting to you over the last uh, three episodes or whatever. Um but will we chat again? Do you think we're going to have more Japanese players coming to Celtic? Surely, you know, in the I, summer, there'll maybe be a couple more. I'd like to think so, especially if these three settle in well. I mean, they'll be clamouring for it after the way Kyogo's played. Yeah, we'll get an all Japan Celtic team. Oh, that'd be incredible. Um, <laughs> it, it just, do you think people in Japan will relate to this Celtic team now? E- even more so than, you know, when just Kyogo and, and I suppose Ange as well. 
Yeah, oh yeah, I think so. The Japanese uh, supporters love to follow their players that go across. So you'll get more Marinos supporters, you'll get Frontale supporters, mm. you'll get Gamba supporters, and yeah, it will be. Yeah, you know, well, without doubt, Celtic will be uh, uh, Japan's Scottish team for, for sure. So yeah, and uh, you'll be on the zone over in Japan. You'll be the ch- the game of choice, I'm sure. And uh, it looks like the Celtic uh, Japanese Twitter is uh, definitely hotting up. So I'm sure, yeah. You are, Japan, let's say, Celtic are Japan's number one team outside of Japan. Brilliant. I can't remember if it was you or, or someone else was saying that fans in Japan almost tend to support individuals sometimes mm. rather than teams. So if a player moves, they'll almost support another team. I don't know how true that is. Yeah, it's, it's something like that. Yeah, they will follow their favourite player around and just, it's kind of a similar, I'd say, when you had David Beckham and you'd have the players that would follow him around and be, oh, I'm a Real Madrid supporter now or a LA Galaxy supporter. So, yeah, you'll get you'll get a bit of that. So whatever player moves to uh, Celtic from Japan, you will get their fan base that will follow him with them. Part-timers, we call them, Sam. I think that's the the, the British term for it. Uh, It's been great to chat, mate. People can find you on Twitter at FRSoccerSam, where you're regularly tweeting about Japanese football as well. So once again, mate, thanks so much. Well, thank you again for having me, and I look forward to speaking to you in the summer when we've got a few more to add to Celtic's ranks.